Listen. Big four five. Pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it. Sounds of Rizzo Chief inside Boiler Room London. How you lot feeling? Hey, for the viewers online, there's only one of this tune. It's called a dub plate. A dub plate is an acetate disc, usually 10 inches in diameter. Uh, they're all limited edition. Uh, this is the first one, this is the green one, and there's a red one, and then there's a the transparent one, the clear one. It's basically a vinyl dub, so it's real hard wear and it lasts uh, longer than your traditional acetate dub. So this one come about, I think I asked um, Matty for the parts for this one. So this one is on dub plate. This one hasn't come out at all. Uh, precise mastering cut the dub plate on this one, on the mm. 12 inch. Is that, sound? Uh, is that single sided? Yeah, um, that's single sided. Well, yeah. yeah. No, it's um, sorry, oh, no. double sided, but you can see there's like a bit of wear to this. Yeah, blimey. Just yeah. a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is, um, yeah, dub plate, dub plate, dub plate only. You might be one of 10, or maybe the one person who's got it. You know, you was that person who was in charge in promoting that tune and I don't know, giving it life. So now we're going to come to cutting a record. Okay, running groove. So the things we're looking out for, we're checking to see if all of the levels are good on the PPM machine. Um, we're checking to see if the if the arm is moving across the record properly, we're checking to see if the pitch is set to the correct level still, because it can vary. Checking our helium to see if it's still on. Um, what else are we checking? Checking to see if there's any swarf which is uh, being pushed away. Uh, it's checking that it's being vacuumed away efficiently and there's nothing trailing around because you can get some serious swarf fires if there's anything gets caught up, if any excess gets caught up onto the head itself. It's made from nitrocellulose, so it's highly flammable. So it's the biggest cause of fires in studios, for cutting lays at least, is swarf fire. So got to make sure you've got a good vacuum there. Do you have anything for us? Yeah, we can. Right, okay, yeah. cool. So, um, this is a dub plate run from some guy. Yeah. So, clear, um, clear yeah, plate. I've not seen that plates. before. And these are like the, 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 I think they call them poly plates. Okay. Right. So, um, they're like a plastic cut, basically. So, they're still cut like a normal dub plate. Yeah. yeah. But it's on this stuff, and it, this stuff kind of lasts forever. Ah, so, nice. like, okay. I don't think there's much of a sound difference. I think there's a mm. slight sound difference compared to acetate. Yeah. yeah. But it's very minute. Like, you can't really hear it. Right. And so, it's not going to run off after like 50 And plates. they're not going to die. Yeah, like, yeah. Like when I was listening to them dub plates earlier, you can hear the crackles and everything. Yeah. And, and they just, they die after a while. Like, yeah. Especially the first beat. When you're mixing the first beat, it can yeah. fuzz off. Yeah. This, you're not going to get that. These will last forever. So, oh, okay, cool. And they're limited runs as well. So this is a Sun Guy one. Uh, play. We featured him recently. He did uh, an album with Jan Baxter yeah. on High Focus. No, that wasn't no. on High Focus. Jan Baxter's High Jam Focus. Baxter. But it was a, a, like a yeah. hip hop type thing. Yeah, it's good. It was sick. Like, really the beats good. are so good. Yeah. So this is Poo Poo Bum Bum. That's his. Um, right, Poo Poo Bum Bum. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fair That's play. his uh, new label. Okay. Number two. Uh, number three or number two? Uh, Let's have a look. Number three. Uh, number number three, three, yeah. That's it. Sweet. Is this 45? Is this a B-side? So this is three, to work in the club, this is. Yeah. 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 So this is coming out or just your little exclusive? I think he's, what he's doing with with, with Bum Bum is he's doing, literally doing like limited runs. So they're dub cut, limited runs. Ah, I see. And it's vinyl only, you can't get it on digital. So you can get these in shops or? I think you can, but yeah. like, you're going to have to ask some guy. But I'm right. just giving you the information that I know. We're coming straight down, aren't we? The tune got made, say, on a Wednesday night. By the weekend, you were down at Music House cutting it. People kind of saw it as just being an underground thing. It wasn't. You had Top Boy DJs at the time, you know, this groove line over here, or this over here, and they'd be like, oh shit, he's next to me, he's down in there, you know? It's kind of like being involved in an exclusive musical club. 
producers that you liked, you might meet them there and they'd be like, I've got a new track coming out, you want to hear it? And then you'll cut it. It was first come, first serve. First serve, yeah. <laughs> it was first yeah, come, Yeah, because first it, the, the appointment thing don't, don't work. Right, you make a time, someone's late, someone's sitting there waiting. You can't stop them to say, right, I, I've made an appointment with him, so you, you come in. It, it never works. I mean, I, I just noticed the way that it would work in Music House. Get there early, get there with your things, put in your order, and then people had to wait. Yeah. You know, and if you turned up and you saw someone like Hyper Groove right here, forget it. <laughs> well, it. Well, all right. Groove Rise is the only one that never had to wait. And if anybody noticed, like, he would walk in, go into my dad's room, sit there for a little while, guaranteed he's cutting next. It was my dad's brethren, innit? it? Guaranteed oh, okay. Groove was cutting next. I, I wouldn't do it. Not that, not because yeah, I just felt guilty. Yeah. And all these people sitting out there, imagine like the, the, the young boy that come with his one tune and he's been sitting there four hours to get one tune cut. And no one don't, no one don't even want to say, you know what, go on, do your But you know, yeah, tune. but see, there's, there's, a, there's a flip side to it, you know, because, I, I, you know, at the point I was that young boy, you know, I started out my career in jungle and everything, and I didn't know anybody, mm. you know. I got to meet everybody by places like Music House, going to the clubs and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. And building yeah. that up. And I just found that that weight gave you that opportunity to network. Yeah, it did. Do you it understand? It definitely did, yeah. yeah. yeah that yeah. weight was the yeah. time where... I could get to meet people, you know, and play them my stuff and hear what they're doing and, you know, talk because four hours is a yeah. long time. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know so what I mean? Like to sit there and, <laughs> yeah, and think, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you yeah. know, enough joke, people would go and go out in the the, hall, the alleyway and yeah. smoke. Yeah, yeah. You know, go yeah. to the shop, get a little juice. Yeah, yeah. Or there was the West Indian shop. For the West Indian the shop. We used to go Trevi's as well, like the Italian place. We used to go um, Subway. Mickey Finn used to drive the subway and, and all that business, like, it was wicked, man. This is probably my most prized, one of my most prized dubs. Um, anytime I play this dub. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Sick. Anytime okay, I play this history. dub, it's, um, it goes off. Uh, I remember playing at um, Beautiful Crafted when I came back into the scene from um, bringing the label back and stuff, and I remember playing this tune here and this... Out of all the dubs I was playing, which was going off, this one just went off. It's St. Angel's VIP. Um, Mr. Goldie. So, yeah, I look after this dub. I try not to play it too often. <laughs> We're on it then. Yeah. So, the first person that played this was Randall at AWOL. And absolutely ripped the face apart. Yeah, and even though I was with Goldie, I had to wait my time to get it. Like yeah. Randall had it, Ryder had it, Fabia, you know, the usual suspects, Scott Scott. Yeah. And then eventually I was able to have it. And um, yeah, I cut it twice in fact. Yeah? Yeah. Just so that was sure. it, like, the, the, like, you'd have like the tears, right? It was always Ryder had yeah, it, yeah. Randall Ra had it. Randall, Ryder, yeah. I think the, the main guy was Randall, Ryder, Fabio, Doc Scott, Booker. They were your... They, they had, had it first. Yeah, and I'm sure there was others, but yeah. the key five, you know, especially at Reinforce as well, it was Randall. Randall was the daddy. He played it first, yeah, yeah. and then Ryder, Fabio, etc. Um, and that's how it was. I mean, even if... I mean, I could get the stuff at Reinforce, no problem. But this... This twisted my head up when I first heard it at Able okay. because it mixed... Angel and Sinister. Sinister was on Force of Five, the Groove Rider remix. Yeah. So it merged the two, and then you heard it. I remember hearing it and thinking, oh, this mix is sick. Yeah, and then and another it, tune comes yeah. as well. And, and then you're like, like, what is. And it was just twisting up my head, <laughs> and then I realised what was going on. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, this is, I think this Proper is the way it starts. Side. Yeah. This is, yeah. I love this, this, um, this, I can't even go mad right now. <laughs> Cause I do, I get goosebumps when I hear it. It's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's it. A lot of my new music, it might not see the light of day for like eight, nine months. And in that time, I want to be playing it. I want to be testing it to audiences. And so dub plates give me that opportunity.
because of the look and the feel of the label, uh, we're able to manufacture between 15 and we've just done one for 50, uh, Dengue 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 uh, dub plate, which just sold out overnight. Dub plates are really important to me because we can put them out there and see well, what kind of reaction have we got. It's not quite the finished thing, it's not a full release, it's a litmus test. It's nice to have a physical thing rather than just being a digital label. I don't really believe in that. People that buy records might not necessarily always be online listening to stuff. What we want is presence in record stores because people love this collectible feel, but they also know that the music is its exclusive. <laughs>